Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com and EatingThaiFood.com in Bangkok, Thailand. Normally in the morning I tend to stay in the room and try to get some work done in the morning and then also just eat uh, some oatmeal and some other things at the hotel, in the hotel room. Uh, but today we came out, it's about, is it about, I think it's about 9 a.m. We came to a restaurant for breakfast this morning, kind of a late breakfast, and this restaurant is called Som Song Pochana, and they are famous for a number of dishes, and uh, yeah, we got here just, they're just opening right now, so we are here a little bit early, and we're gonna start with a meal here today for breakfast. I got the Gui Tiao Su Tai Hang, which is dry noodles. And what's interesting about this restaurant, unlike other noodle restaurants in Bangkok, is that there are no seasonings on the table. So there's no chili flakes, there's no vinegar, um, but they have included all of the seasoning within the bowl. So that means it is seasoned according to how they want it to be already. That's nice. It is a little bit sweet, but it also has a nice sourness to it and a very nice peanutty, nutty flavor as well. The noodles are also um, kind of like sticky, cooked kind of sticky. And so they are a little bit chewy noodles. And then the, the long beans provide are like half, half blanched. So they provide kind of a, a little fresh crispness and then cilantro on there as well. That was an excellent breakfast and they serve some unique and hard to find dishes in Bangkok so I'm really happy after that but I'm gonna make a full separate video about this restaurant and because we're gonna do a lot of things today and eat a lot of food so I'll cover this in a separate video uh, I think from here we are gonna go have a coffee then we're gonna we actually need to check out of our hotel so we're gonna check out and then move to Satan which is the business financial district of Bangkok and then after that, we're gonna go to Chatu Chak Weekend Market. We're sitting down just for a quick cup of coffee at this place is called Carboni. And my first time here, but this is really a world-class cup of coffee and his machine in there is, is pretty, pretty amazing. It looks like a, it looks like a spacecraft, uh, but yeah, really good coffee. Really smooth and just really flavorful. The time has come for us to check out. It's been a really good stay here. I really like this location of this hotel because it's really close to Khao San, yet at the same time it's just far enough removed to where it's quiet and in a local neighborhood. This area, this whole Bang Lampu area around Khao San, uh, not specifically right on Khao San, but like around the area, I think is one of the best places to stay in Bangkok because of all the old, uh, it's a really old area of town. There are a lot of sightseeing and main attractions around this area and a lot of good food. But we are now moving on to Satan, which is the central business financial district of Bangkok. Another good area to base yourself when you are in Bangkok. And we just called an Uber X and we're gonna take a taxi to the next hotel. We got all checked into this hotel. This place is called Marvin Suites on Satorn Soy 11. And very nice and spacious room, has pretty much everything we need. There's a safe deposit box. There is a hot water heater right there. And this is a completely different area of town, uh, which we will be exploring for the next, I think we'll be here for five nights. Uh, but before we do anything today, because it's the weekend, we are heading off to Chatuchak Weekend Market uh, and also to Otagal Market. It was about a 10 minute walk from our hotel to Surasak BTS station. From here, we're gonna take it all the way to Mochit station, uh, but we will transfer at Seyam station.
We arrived to Mochit BTS station, always really busy on a Saturday because of the market, but we are first gonna go to Otakawa Market, which is very close. We're just gonna jump on the MRT just for one station to get to Kampeng Pet Station, and there is a direct exit there to, I'm getting on the escalator right now, uh, there's a direct exit there to directly to Otakao Market. Made it to Otakao Market, uh, Kampeng Pet, exit number three, and you're right here at the market. This is a local fresh wet market plus a food court, but it is a gourmet, very high-end Thai market. But really, really good food here. And actually my buddy Dwight, he is here right now filming, uh, making some videos as well. So we are gonna be meet my buddy Dwight and do some eating around this market. And this is just a glorious place for food lovers. Oh, durian. Oh, pork. Oh yeah, there's just so much good food in this market. Okay, we are just walking through the food court area, Atakao Market, there is so much good food here. All of these curries, just a beautiful selection. I think I ate here last time I came to Atakao Market. Um, oh, I can smell the stink beans. But yeah, there's just a great selection. There is satay, there's duck, there's som tam. Really the hardest thing about coming to this market is trying to decide what to eat because there's such a good selection and everything is, yeah, I think everything is pretty good. Dwight is filming over there and he is about to order some kanom buang, which is a little crepe-like pancake filled with a number of different fillings. Uh, there is some egg yolk candy in there and then also one with shrimp maybe. This is kanom buang bolan and this is the traditional style of it. Sometimes you'll see them filled with a bunch of cream, which is the, kind of the modern Thai style, but these are the traditional ones. And what she does is she spreads out a little uh, scoop of batter onto a hot plate and they cook until they get like crispy crepes. And then after that, she fills it with a variety of fillings. This one I think is a mixture of coconut and shrimp. And then this one is the foi tong, which is an egg yolk, Portuguese egg yolk candy. And so I'll go, let me try the shrimp one first. And I'm not huge on desserts, but I will definitely try this because it looks very good and the old style, old Thai style. Mm. Oh, that's not very sweet. The pancake is very, very crispy and it tastes almost like a fortune cookie. And then inside, you can taste those shreds of coconut, plus a little, it's a little bit, has that kind of sweet and sour contrast going on. Mm. That one is a little bit sweeter. The egg yolk candy almost has a caramely flavor to it. Dwight is off wandering around the market, but I'm hungry, so I decided to eat, and there is so much good food to choose from that. Yeah, really finally you have to just stop and just order what, what's right in front of you at the moment. Uh, and so I got a, we, Ying and I are sharing a couple of different things to begin with. This is a plate of Khao Rat Gang, which is rice with a variety of different dishes on top. Uh, this one is pickled mustard greens with egg in Thai called Pakatong Pad Kai. And then there is a soft boiled egg on the side. This one is Geng Te Po, which is uh, a curry with pork and uh, morning glory. This one is called Geng Fak Kai, which is a uh, curry, chicken curry with uh, winter melon. And uh, I gotta, I gotta go in for that, that Geng Te Po first. Geng Te Po is a, a wonderful curry. Mm. It's a little bit on the sweet side, um, but it is nice and spicy. And then the Water Morning Glory is very soft, 
and just kind of, it's been soaking in that curry for a long time, so it just kind of disintegrates into like coconut milky creaminess. Um, oh, but look at that yolk. <laughs> Put a little bit, a couple of those chilies on there. That's gonna be a good bite. Look at that. I could just eat soft boiled eggs with rice and pick up uh, chilies with fish sauce all day long. I have a serious weakness for somtam pupala. And there's a famous stall here at the market called somtam otaka. And they make somtam green, all sorts of different green papaya salad. Oh, there's even a whole chili right there. Oh, okay, I'll save that one for later. Just look, look at those ingredients. Oh man, oh. I got a little. Mm. I got a little crab flock. That is a ridiculously good plate of something pupala. In Isan language, uh, you would say sap mak because it just is. Um, it's really delicious. A well-rounded flavor. It makes your mouth like tingle with delicious flavor. And then grilled chicken, which is looking delicious as well. And I think I'll go for the drumstick first. There are two different sauces. This this is the one I like. Drumsticks are wonderful things. Oh. oh, that is a delicious drumstick. It is so juicy and oily and moist. And the texture is almost, yeah, it's almost creamy. Um, really, yeah, that's really good grilled chicken. And I also got a bag, uh, a baggie of kaniao sticky rice, which is the the partner of somtam and gayang. This is a ridiculously good somtam pupala. It's so well balanced in flavor and so yeah, so strong and pungent. I love it. That somtam and that entire chicken went down beautifully, uh, and I'm now joined with Dwight who has been walking around the market, and Dwight came back to the table with a couple loaves of durian, freshly peeled out of the shell, as well as some mangosteen. As Dwight was opening the package, on the saran wrap, a little piece of the durian skin peeled off, and you can see that like custardy goodness sitting below there. The surface is a little bit smooth and like waxy, Oh man, I'm actually, my, I almost had some drool that came out. And this one is a little less ripe, so it's gonna be less pungent and not as creamy. So this one is not quite as ripe. <laughs> uh, the last piece we had was uh, not quite as ripe, so it didn't have such a pungent flavor or aroma, uh, whereas this one is more ripe and it's gonna be a lot more pudding-like and softer. Oh, and I can just feel that softness in my fingers. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> if we sway it at the same time, we can have but it's Just straight up creamy, buttery sweetness and very rich and very custardy. All over my hands. Okay, Dwight also, along with the durian, happened to pick up a couple like prized uh, mangosteen, which is a type of fruit that that's also very popular in Thailand. And it's often consumed along with durian because they say durian is a hot fruit and mangosteen is a cooling fruit. And so you're supposed to eat them together and they really are supposed to complement each other and yeah I always like them together because mainly actually I think because durian is so rich and then uh, mangosteen is kind of refreshing and juicy and so they go really well together and so I like to kind of turn it upside down like this and then I use kind of like to use the pressure method and just squeeze and then it comes apart like that and then you just pull off this thick outer shell skin and then you're left with these little, like a little flower of garlic cloves 
and that is the mangosteen right there. Cheers. Mangosteen time. Oh yeah. That's like an entire, that's, yeah, that's an entire mouthful of juice in that bite of mangosteen. And it's so sweet with just a little bit of a sourness to it. <laughs> that's superb. And the combination of that durian plus the mangosteen, that's just a, yeah, just a wonderful harmony and balance. My body feels perfectly balanced right now. No, I'm just joking, but that did taste really good. And thank you to Dwight for buying that durian and mangosteen. That was good, man. Worth the fruit. <laughs> yeah, and it's not durian season anymore, so durian is a little on the pricey side here, but it's still available year round at Atakal Market. The food here at Atakal Market is marvelous and yeah, so many beautiful fruits and vegetables to also see here. And it's a really clean market as well. Nice big aisles and just a good environment. Directly from Atakal Market, we just walked underneath the MRT uh, and they have an exit to JJ Market, which is also Chatuchak Market. And this is a giant outdoor weekend market, very famous in Bangkok. You can find pretty much everything here uh, from clothes to souvenirs to like handicrafts to just unique things. And it's always busy and always crowded on the weekend. I have to be honest and say that it's not my favorite place. Uh, and part of that is just personally that I'm not a big shopper, uh, but it is really a uh, good place to visit when you are in Bangkok, especially if you want to do some shopping and just to wander around. Lots of interesting things. There are cafes, there are restaurants, there are... Yeah, the full option is here. Okay, he has, he has a megaphone here barking out his, his menu and he says he has really cold water. That water looks amazing. I'm going to get one right now. And in Thai, he's saying Nam Yen Jiap. That means like really, really cold. It is pretty cold. <laughs> that, tastes, <laughs> that tastes really good. Met up with Vito, who is from Brazil. Yeah. Very nice, nice to meet you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you just wander through these back alleys of Chatuchak Market, you can find just about everything. There are, I'm walking past a souvenir shop and on my right hand side there is a massage store. I'm about to walk under a bunch of chandeliers and through some antique shops. But yeah, you can really spend hours wandering around this market and you can really find an abundance of everything uh, and you might not even, you might be surprised with what you can find as well. Oh, that feels good, a bunch of fans. Golden fans. Right behind me here is kind of a food court section where there are a lot of snacks and I think there are some, there's some tables back there too where you can sit down for a bowl of noodles. What? There are a lot of snacks to eat at Chak Chak Market and one of the popular snacks is fried squid eggs. So the squid, inside of the squid there is a sack of eggs and they are stir fried up on a like hot griddle with a lot of oil and then they are keep, they, she keeps frying them until they kind of dry out, the oil kind of dries out, which probably means that all the oil goes into the squid eggs and then until they're like crispy on the edges and then they are ready to eat. She dishes them into a little box with uh, some, some raw cabbage on the bottom and then scoops on some kind of Thai seafood sauce with cherry tomatoes in it. 
just kind of have a smooth texture and they are a little bit bouncy but at the same time they're like smooth all the way through and then with that chili sauce that chili sauce is a little bit spicy and not too sweet and then they have like little crispy edges that is that is pretty good um, it's sort of like eating like egg yolks oh. that one has a totally different texture than the first bite that one is more like more slimy huh okay Rodrigo, Rodrigo from Spain, yeah, having yeah. a good time here with Mark. Nice people. Very nice to meet you, <laughs> Rodrigo. Have a great time in Bangkok. Thank you. If I am not mistaken, there are something like around 8,000 stalls at Chatuchak Market. And those are registered stalls, so there are even more stalls that are probably unregistered. Uh, but yeah, if you, are, if you love to shop or even just wander, Chatu Chak Market is a yeah, great place to visit when you come to Bangkok. Hi, my name's Paul. I'm Rudy. And we're from Toronto, Canada. Hi. Very nice to meet both of you. And hope you guys have a great trip in Thailand and all over Southeast Thank Asia. Thanks a lot. Very nice to meet you guys. Have a great day, man. Thank you, man. Take care. The paella place is pretty awesome. The chef is a character. Dwight is having a popsicle <laughs> and I'm just having an iced coffee. Hi. What is your name? Uh, Catherine Woods, Lady Catherine. Cat Life. I'm on Instagram and YouTube. Hi. Oh, you make, you make yeah, I do beauty tutorials mostly, but oh, okay. I'm turning it into a travel vlog since I'm out here in Bangkok. So. What's your What's your yeah. channel? Lady Cat Life. Lady Cat Life. <laughs> oh, cool. She makes videos also, Catherine. <laughs> Very cool to meet her at Chatu Chak. We are gonna call it a day at Chatu Chak. I think we're gonna head back to the BTS station and head back to Satan. We took the BTS this time to Chongnonsi Station and that was a great trip to Jatuchak Market and also really good to hang out with my buddy Dwight and eat some delicious food at Atakao Market. And by the way, Dwight is filming some of his own videos and so he's gonna start publishing videos on his YouTube channel so go check that out. I will link his channel in the description box below. And from here, I think we're gonna head back to our hotel Maybe take a shower, it's been a, a sweaty afternoon. And then it's time to eat again for dinner. Had a quick shower and now we are going to meet a friend who basically lives just across the street from where we are staying uh, for dinner tonight. Okay. And now we are heading for dinner somewhere down the road. Will just brought us to a food stall that he often eats at. And so we're gonna have dinner here. Uh, they're serving ahan tamsang, which is stir-fried dishes. And we're about to order a bunch of food, I think. That's awesome. Okay, I think this is the first street food stall I've ever been to in Bangkok that has an iPad Okay, it's not an iPad, it's a Samsung. It's a Samsung, but it is a touchpad menu and you can just scroll through their different dishes. That is very convenient. And yeah, that's awesome. First dish has arrived, and this is gung pad pongari, which is uh, shrimp in a yellow egg curry. And there are some onions in there and some peppers. This one is pamuk pad cha, which is uh, squid stir fried with finger root, and there's basil in there and chilies. <laughs> and I got a shrimp in there, and I think that's Chinese celery. That's awesome. You can taste that yellow curry powder, and then with those shrimp, they are nice and 
muscular tasting. And oh, and this is the potak that has just arrived. Oh, what is that? And this dish here is called mumanao, which is pork with lime juice and chilies and I think that's mostly what it is. And then we also got kana, am I coming? Kana, am I? Kana mukrom. So that is gailan, stir fried with crispy pork belly. Here you guys go. And then this one is the poltak. And let me get a piece of fish and some basil. Yeah, that's nice and sour and salty. We finished off most of the dishes, but then we decided to go for a Thai omelet at the end. And look at that, that is just a completely deep fried, looks incredibly crispy omelet. Just look at the crunchiness of that thing. Oh. I... <laughs> Very popular to eat an omelet with a little bit of sas prik, which is chili ketchup. That is, that's like a pizza slice of a Thai omelet. Oh yeah, that is, that is oily, but that is very tasty. It's completely crispy, it's very oily, it's salty, it's crunchy. It's basically like everything unhealthy all on a single plate and it's extremely delicious. Great way to end the day, some delicious food and good environment as well. I'm gonna end the vlog for today here. It has been another delicious day of eating in Bangkok and uh, good to be here in Satan now. So thank you all very much for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up and also leave a comment below. If you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. And also, uh, if you have a friend who loves Thai food and would loves travel as well, I would really appreciate it if you would share this video with them. That's it for today. Tomorrow, stay tuned for another day in Bangkok, and thank you very much for watching.